Hi, everybody. This is Kay and David Darty speaking to you from Wilmington, North Carolina, where we live nowadays. But on Saturday night, when you're watching this, we'll be in Alexandria, Virginia, for my 55th reunion at Episcopal High School. We're looking forward to that. I'm the chairman of the reunion committee, so I'm excited about getting everybody together. But we're sad that we can't be with you in celebration of the 20th year of co-education at the Hill School. Allie and uh, Shelly have made it possible for us to tape this message, so we're doing it and uh, know it's going to be a really exciting night back at the Hill. And it is exciting. I know for all of you there and for, um, for David and me, we're not only celebrating 20 years of co-education, but we are celebrating 20 very successful years of co-education by any standard, by any measure. And David, haven't we been so lucky to be part of it and to share this great experience with terrific young women, young men, Hill faculty, all who made it go so well? Because as you know, it didn't have to go well. There are many, many big plans like this one that um, when they do um, go successfully, people think that it was inevitable, that it was meant to be. Well, we know that it required a lot of very hard work by a lot of people, and a lot could have gone wrong. Sure. You know, we learned that from the very beginning, because you and I, a year and a half before the Board of Trustees took up the issue, went out on the road and talked with over 30 focus groups, uh, alums of the school, former parents, with whom we shared a lot of information about admissions, finances, fundraising, and talk with them candidly about the possibility that the school could go co-ed. The reaction, there were some people who were furious. 10% uh, of our alums, I'd say, in those 300 plus folks that we talk with said that if the school goes co-ed, you'll never get another nickel from me. <laughs> and another 10% said, until the Hill goes co-ed, you'll never get another nickel from me. But the great majority in the middle, 80% of our alums whom we spoke with said, David, Kay, do whatever it takes to make the Hill School truly great again. And so we felt we really had a mandate uh, to do whatever was best for the school. Ultimately, our alums not only sent their daughters to the Hill, uh, but an even more number sent their sons and supported our capital campaign that we initiated at the start of co-education with a goal of $75 million. Uh, they were willing to uh, share with us $83 million in that wonderful campaign. Pretty pretty good success. I agree. And, and the admission story was even more amazing. Um, in the fall of 1997, when we began to set goals for the fall of 1998 and for the arrival of young women, we set a goal of 40 boarders and 10 day students. That's right. yeah. And what happened? Well, we ended up with 89 girls. What a great thing that was. Now, we did have to make a few adjustments. For example, we tripled up the corner rooms on Wend Wendell Dormitory. And um, everybody was fine with that. And not only that, there were a lot of people who thought, gosh, these young girls, uh, young women are not going to want to come to the Hill School, a 150-year-old all-boys boarding school. Well, as someone in the admission office, I can tell you right now that they were very eager to join us. And we had a very, very successful uh, time with those 89 girls. Well, that was an amazing time. Uh, those kids, in effect, said, we, we really want to be there. Uh, what about the faculty? Well, you cleverly <laughs> appointed Jennifer Lagore and Rick Walbridge as the head of the Coeducational Transition Committee. And they did a wonderful job. They planned for so many things. First of all, they thought about ladies' rooms and dress code, right. uh, things from sports to arts, from Hill Traditions 
to school rules. Sure. And instead of trying to do it completely on their own, they visited other schools. They talked with educators, leaders who had done this before. And um, in effect, what they did was consider every possible thing that could go wrong, that could go right. They thought of everything. And in the fall of 1998, we were ready. There was one thing that they didn't think about. <laughs> On the first day of school, when the new students arrived, we had still not received from the borough of Pottstown an occupancy per, uh, permit for the new academic building. Uh, I was petrified. Uh, we finally got that permit later on in the day, but we had actually created a schedule for classes in that first week to meet in faculty homes, uh, in other buildings at the school, and even on the lawns of the school if we had had to. It could have been a mess that first few days of coeducation if we couldn't have gotten into that beautiful new building. Absolutely. But all that worked out. And as a result, we have so many wonderful, wonderful memories. Do you have some favorites, David? <laughs> well, yes, I do. Yes, you do. <laughs> About, uh, uh, what, 12 years of them from the time that we uh, started all this until our retirement in, in 2012. Uh, just looking back at that first year, that's probably the best way to uh, to do this now. I'll never forget the first night of uh, alumni weekend, uh, Lawrenceville uh, weekend, uh, when we had a big kickoff dinner in um, the Sweeney Gymnasium uh, for our alums. And we asked Dante Catrona, who was the president of the Sixth Forum, to speak. And uh, no surprise, he just, he knocked it out of the ballpark. He was terrific. Uh, Dante was so thoughtful and so serious and and uh, just had a keen sense of the moment. Then the prefect for, or head prefect for the girls, uh, Krista Anderson from Seattle, whose dad had attended the school, stood up to speak. And honestly, you could have heard a pin drop. It was remarkable. Uh, people hung on her every word. And she was so gracious, so graceful, but had a very... A uh, confident sense of the rightness of the decision for the school and of her position in it. She was ready uh, to lead in a, uh, a new Hill School. It was really powerful. Yeah. Well, my, one of my favorite memories was had to do with our decision early on to accept 13 sixth form girls. I don't know of another school who went co-ed who did this as well as we did. So we had 13 sixth formers or seniors. And not only did we decide to do that, we decided to make those girls prefects. We wanted girl leaders to lead our girls. And they did an amazing job that first year. And sort of as a symbol of how well they did and how mature and positive their leadership was, we formed a 13... 99, get it? 1399 <laughs> Club. They are 13 exclusive members of that clever, club. Clever. <laughs> yes. Exactly. A one year club. One year club. Uh, but an exclusive one. I've got one other memory that I've got to share. Uh, back to Lawrenceville Weekend, in fact, that first year, because um, we played Lawrenceville in field hockey. Uh, in a match, frankly, that uh, featured our best uh, girls team of that fall uh, with Julie Van Dusen and uh, Elizabeth Bucks and uh, Emily Roudenbush. Uh, it, was, it was just a great group of kids. I'm forgetting, of course, a lot of players on that team. But with about six minutes left in that game, our girls who had blue and gray grease paint on their faces and uh, and just were so psyched to play Lawrenceville were in a 0-0 tie with our arch rival. And they knew exactly how important this rivalry was 125 years in the history of our school. Uh, Lawrenceville scored a goal toward the end of the game and won it one nothing. But the tears of joy, uh, the tears of 
of, uh, of, of great confidence in themselves that uh, they shed. You and I did too afterwards. Uh, I'll just never forget. In fact, I can't even talk about that today, all these years later, uh, without, without getting a lump in my throat. David, you get a lump in your throat whenever the Phillies win a baseball game. <laughs> Touche. Uh, guilty as charged, but uh, that's the Irishman in me, I and I've, uh, I I've got it coming to me. It was, um, it was just a great moment. And, you know, it's probably just as well that we're not going to be there this weekend, uh, as emotional as we both are, because we would, um, we would just embarrass ourselves. We would. So it's good we're going to be in Alexandria. <laughs> Um, congratulations again. This is a, just a wonderful tribute to, to all of you who have made this possible at the school and uh, uh, helped make our great school even greater. So um, for Hill, dear old Hill, we'll say... We love you. And uh, eat your spinach. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.